Hello, I'm Marty Edwin, and I'm here at the South Central Regional Library. I'm going to show you a bit about glazes and how they work on pottery. Here we have um, two different cups that I've made. This one, as you can tell, is impervious to water. It has this shiny coating, and the colors are very, very vivid. This one, as you notice, is dry. It doesn't have any coating on it at all. It will absorb water very, very easily, and the colors are somewhat dusty and chalky looking. So what happens is, even though this clay has been fired to a high temperature, and it won't let a lot of water soak through it. Um, it still has not yet been sealed against the outside environment. This glaze is actually a type of liquefied glass that has been put on there and melted, and that's what seals it. Now, glazing is very different from paint because part of what happens in the process of firing is that the glass elements are transparent and become clear, and the pigment elements are embedded inside of that. So what appears to be a certain color at this stage isn't going to look quite the same once it fires and comes out at the next stage. Now inside of a glaze there are basically three elements that are required. You have to have an element that makes it flow and stick to the pottery. You have to have an element that causes it to become glassified. And then you also have to have an element that causes those chemicals to melt at the same temperature and also to melt at a temperature that will be compatible with the clay, the clay that you've used as well. Um, there are other chemicals you add that add color. Mineral oxides will add colors. There are chemicals you can add that will make the glaze flow more. Chemicals that will make it stiffer and not flow as much. And chemicals that will make it opaque as opposed to transparent or matte instead of glossy. The difficulty in that is that none of those chemicals are pure. You know, this is a bag here of um, EPK kaolin, right? And this will help to cause the glaze to have a very sort of silky, nice sort of feel to it and to lay down nice and smooth, but it's also mixed with other minerals inside of it. And so often what formulas do is they have they balance out the chemicals inside of each of these bags of minerals. Inside of the clear glaze that I've mixed up here are these chemicals. Um, as you can see, they all look like powder. However, when they're fired, they will turn into a very nice, smooth, hard surface that you can see underneath. Um, I measure each of these out wearing my trusty face mask because these things can be carcinogenic. And even when they're not carcinogenic, they can cause a great deal of lung damage because they are a mineral powder that won't dissolve inside your body. So this is an important element. After I weigh these out, I sift and grind them together, and then I slowly stir and mix in water. Okay. Now this is a batch that I made yesterday in which I did that. I mixed up my chemicals, I sifted them, ground them down, and then carefully added water. At this point, um, it would be nice if I could just go ahead and do my cup right away. But unfortunately, it's had a chance to settle, and so it isn't going to work out quite as well and as easily as I like. So what my procedure will be is I have this sieve right here. Can you see that very well? Yes. And I'm going to pour this glaze through this mesh, force it through the mesh, and that way, any small little granules, any things that haven't dissolved very well, are going to pass through here and dissolve up into the glaze so that it's nice and dense. Yes, um, you know, I mentioned how some of the powders are unhealthy to breathe. Well. Some of the chemicals in this water will also soak in through your skin. And since my hands are going to get this on them, I really prefer to wear these gloves. Okay, so now, as you can see, I have the liquid inside here. And now I'm just going to force it through the mesh by rubbing it down with this card. Yep. Yeah. 
you know, and while this um, process doesn't seem very exciting or glamorous, it's actually kind of um, meditative to sort of get in the rhythm of doing that and force it and see the amount disappear. Fill a little bit more. You know, when you do this, your mind can wander. You can think about all kinds of things. And you have that satisfaction of watching that puddle get smaller and smaller every time. Essentially, there are three ways that you can apply glaze. Well, I'll take that back. There are four ways that you can apply glaze. You can brush it on with a brush, like it's paint. You can pour it over it with a spoon. You can put it in an airbrush and spray it, or you can take your piece and dip it. Um, each of those methods has its benefits and its drawbacks. Um, to get a nice, smooth, even coating, um, one of the best ways is to dip your piece inside of it. And that's why I'm going to make enough in this bucket so that when I put my cup in, it will be completely covered. Yes, of course, the drawback with dipping is you can't get as much detail in how you apply it. The drawback with pouring is you can't cover the whole thing at once. The drawback with brushing is that you end up with streaks and globs instead of a really smooth, even thing. Now, of course, each of those drawbacks can be, you know, overcome as long as you're aware of them. You know, as long as you're aware of what it's going to do, you can adjust yourself to make sure that it does what you want it to do. And what I want this to do is to make a nice, smooth coating over my cup with those cats so that those cats look vivid so their color really comes alive and the lines look very, very sharp. So I'm trying to do enough in this bucket so that when I take my cup and dip it in, the glaze is going to go up to the top. And so that means right now it's about up to here. I can make it even higher. Now the interesting thing, of course, is that since this bucket is wide, right, it's going to require more to cover it. Well, I have thought of that, and I'm not going to dip it in this bucket. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to clean it all up and then pour it back into this smaller, more narrow bucket, and that way the glaze will be out up to here, and I can easily dip my cup into it. And so the reason that I have to sieve all of this glaze instead of just the small amount I'm using is because I'm going to pour it back into the same bucket. So one last pour, and then we're ready to go. Uh, the exciting life of a potter. Okay, there we go. Looks delicious. When, um, when you work with glazes, you don't necessarily want to stir them up real vigorously to the extent that you cause bubbles or air to get pushed into it. And so that's why you didn't see me start this whole thing by shaking the bucket like crazy or stirring it up super fast. Okay. All right, but what I do like to do though is clean things up before I make a mess. Because once this gets fired, it'll last for thousands of years. Thousands of years. This cup will be around as long as somebody doesn't smash it. When I dip this in here, um, the longer I keep this cup inside, the more glaze it's going to soak in and absorb. So I want to dip it in. One, two, three seconds, pull it out. Okay. That's it. Now, after this finishes dripping, I'll set it down to dry. When it has finished drying, I will come back in with a brush or something to cover that bottom line. And that's how you glaze a cup. If you're interested in seeing how this cup looks after it gets fired, you can come visit me at the open air market in Beachmont off of 3rd Street, Southern Parkway. Be there Saturday mornings all summer long. 
and ask me about it and I'll be happy to pull this out and show you how it looks. Okay, and the end.